Mm -hmm. I'd like to hear what your doctor can do that really makes you feel better. What's helpful? You know, um, what are some good interactions? They could explain to the caregiver what changes are to be expected in the patient and how to cope with them. They could explain how to accept and respond to these changes. Uh, what services are available and when to use them? What to do as the disease progresses? It always gets worse, never gets better. What, when and how? What conditions to watch for and to report to the doctor? He is aware of father's Alzheimer's and when I would go in or when we would go in to see him he would always greet my husband shake his hands and so on and then he'd say do you remember who I am and so on which my husband never did but he would talk to him ask him questions and speak to him by name and so on and then he would look at him and he would say now Mr. Hudson I'm going to ask your wife a few questions is that all right with you and then my husband would he really didn't know what the doctor was saying, but then the doctor would talk to me and ask questions as to how things have been and so on and how he was doing. And I do appreciate that. But the way he came in, he walked over and he kind of almost knelt down or stooped down. He got at eye level with her and he said, hi Florence, and he told her his name and he says, we're going to make a few tests today and see how you're doing. And, um, you know, he just talked to her so like one human being to another, as this lady back here says. My doctor's nurse is just such a blessing to me. She understands how hard it is for me to get less over there for pneumonia or for the flu shots and things like that. It takes all my skills to get him up and dressed and in the car and you know I'm just exhausted and she she's right there backing me and Eleanor you did a good job you got him here but the doctor's nurse is real is real important the doctor showed a great deal of respect for me as a caregiver and felt that uh, I did have a value using me as consultant in fact my mother's hearing impaired so he would use a technique of saying he'd lean over and say Edna I'm going to talk to your daughter for a minute or two. And she'd say, oh, okay. But I think caregiver respect from the physician is, is really important for them to understand that it's a partnership that they're working with because depending on the stage of dementia, uh, sometimes you have full responsibility, even to the point of legal responsibility for this individual that you're caring for. Respect for the patient. I think is primary. And how is that respect shown? How, to the patient? How, mm -hmm. To how, acknowledge them as a human being. Mm -hmm. They're still alive and a human being and they mean something to all of us who are responsible for them. And it irritates everything when they are totally ignored like they don't exist. They do exist. And some of us care. Mm -hmm. As far as Alzheimer's is concerned, I don't know if this is true for all dementia conditions, but certainly Alzheimer's, there appears to be very little that doctors, in fact the whole medical profession, can actually do medically. That's all I hear. Well, we can't do anything anyway, you know, so, you know, why are you coming back seeing us? We can't do anything. Uh, but they could do a lot in other ways. We went to see the doctor, and my husband also had diabetes. And the doctor said, it's just his diabetes acting up. Well, it, the things he was doing, you know, like gluing in the storm windows and, and uh, boarding up the fireplace and little things like that, I didn't feel was diabetes. So he wouldn't do anything. He said, well, you know, we'll just increase the medication and so on. Well, it was finally, it, this kept getting worse and worse and worse. And my son says, Mom, we're going to go back to the doctor. We're going to have a long talk with him. 
when we took my husband to, and I started to write everything down, all the unusual things that he was doing. We went to see the doctor, and the doctor read my notes, and he looked at me, and he said, I think maybe your husband has Alzheimer's. He did diagnose it at that time, but that was three years after we had brought it to his attention that there was a problem. And he wouldn't do anything about it at the time. I mean, if I had received a diagnosis earlier, been prepared, know what to do, how to, what, board up the house, so to speak, something like that would be helpful. But that was the thing, that was what I wanted, was somebody to tell me, the man has lost his memory, I can see that. Why didn't the other doctor, you know, say that? He could see it too. The lady that was helping me asked the doctor, doctor, what about these seizures that she's having? And do you know what his response was? <coughs> what can you expect? Now, is that, a, is that a sane way for a medical doctor to talk to a, pa to a patient's caregiver? That's exactly what I got. That's what I don't like. It would have helped if he had told me about the support group, which I found accidentally. I was in a long line in a grocery store, and the lady in front of me <laughs> apologized for being there with a bottle of wine. She says, my husband has Alzheimer's, and I'm alone, and I feel like I needed something. <laughs> and I said, my wife has one, too, but I can't go with you, so. <laughs> She told me about her support group. <laughs> the thing that bothered us is that they wouldn't be honest with us. This attitude of what you don't know won't hurt you is absolutely bunk. There's just no, it does more harm than good. You need to tell the patient and the caregiver what they're up against. I really wish doctors would not take that attitude with patients, that you're a lay person, you wouldn't understand it anyway, and what you don't know, you know, isn't good, it's, it's all right. We do want to know. Just because I don't have a nurse's degree doesn't mean that I'm not educated and don't understand what you're saying. So doctors, you say, in what way can you, can you learn? I think it should be a, a prerequisite or whatever you want to call it for your training to go and sit in a support group on a regular basis. It would be a real learning process where you would show compassion for each individual. The family, especially the primary caregiver, need help to cope and understand, to understand what's happening, and that it's not the patient's fault that she or he is changing into a different person. This is all very new and different to the family. It's demanding and it's emotionally draining on them and they need someone with knowledge and compassion to turn to. Someone they can trust and feel comfortable with. The doctor, should he, could he, be that person and give all the help and understanding that he or she is capable of. End of comments. One other thing I was looking for in a doctor was one that was young enough that I wouldn't have to change again because I'm 71 and I don't want to change doctors when I'm 80. So I'm hoping they, the girls didn't know how old he was, but I decided that he was younger than I am. Ha, ha, ha.